Liberty was a 19th century anarchist periodical published in the United States by Benjamin Tucker from August 1881 to April 1908. The following is Liberty's purpose. Liberty enters the field of journalism to speak for herself because she finds no one willing to speak for her. She hears no voice that always champions her. She knows no pen that always writes in her defense. She sees no hand that is always lifted to avenge her wrongs or vindicate her rights. Many claim to speak in her name, but few really understand her. Still fewer have the courage and the opportunity to consistently fight for her. Her battle, then, is her own to wage and win. She accepts it fearlessly and with a determined spirit. Her foe, authority, takes many shapes, but, broadly speaking, her enemies divide themselves into three classes. First, those who abhor her as a means and as an end of progress, opposing her openly, avowedly, sincerely, consistently, universally. Second, those who profess to believe in her as a means of progress, but who accept her only so far as they think she will subserve their own selfish interests, denying her and her blessings to the rest of the world. Third, those who distrust her as a means of progress, believing in her only as an end to be obtained by first trampling upon, violating, and outraging her. These three phases of opposition to liberty are met in almost every sphere of thought and human activity. Good representatives of the first are seen in the Catholic Church and the Russian autocracy, of the second in the Protestant Church and the Manchester School of Politics and Political Economy, of the third in the atheism of Gambetta and the socialism of Karl Marx. Through these forms of authority, another line of demarcation runs transversely, separating the divine from the human, or, better still, the religious from the secular. Liberty's victory over the former is well nigh achieved. Last century, Voltaire brought the authority of the supernatural into disrepute. The church has been declining ever since. Her teeth are drawn, and though she seems still to show here and there vigorous signs of life, she does so in the violence of the death agony upon her, and soon her power will be felt no more. It is human authority that hereafter is to be dreaded, and the state, its organ, that in the future is to be feared. Those who have lost their faith in gods only to put it in governments, those who have ceased to be church worshippers only to become state worshippers, those who have abandoned pope for king or czar and priest for president or parliament, have indeed changed their battleground, but nonetheless are foes of liberty still. The church has become an object of derision. The state must be made equally so. The state is said by some to be a necessary evil. It must be made unnecessary. This century's battle, then, is with the state. The state that debases man. The state that prostitutes woman. The state that corrupts children. The state that trammels love. The state that stifles thought. The state that monopolizes land. The state that limits credit. The state that restricts exchange. The state that gives idle capital the power of increase and, through interest, rent, profit, and taxes, robs industrious labor of its products. How the state does these things and how it can be prevented from doing them. Liberty proposes to show in more detail hereafter in the prosecution of her purpose. Enough to say now that monopoly and privilege must be destroyed, opportunity afforded, and competition encouraged. This is Liberty's work, and down with authority, her war cry.